Hi and welcome back to the second part on how to build a soil moisture sensor to control garden irrigation. What we are going to cover today. Last time we set up four different hardware configurations to find out which ESP board fit best for our needs and also which soil moisture sensor does the best job. Therefore we will have a quick look at the measured values so that we can make a decision today. Before we start sorry for the delay. Unfortunately I'm pretty far behind schedule. But time is always short, I also encountered a few challenges and therefore I revised the content for the videos several times. Sorry for that. Ok, let's start with the measurements of the setups we created in the last video. Therefore we switch to Grafana integration in Home Assistant. The tests were a while ago, so I have already set the time range accordingly. At the first look, this looks very chaotic. For now let's focus on energy consumption. To do so, we deactivate the measured values from the soil moisture sensors. The remaining four graphs each represent a setup. As you can see, I did three comparison tests, which started here, here and here. Let's focus on the first comparison. As you can see on the green graph, the setup with the board from ASET Delivery ran out of juice after just one day. In terms of energy consumption, not a good choice. The orange graph belongs to the SparkFun ESP32 thing. The measurements are very strange because at the first try the battery lasts for 4 days and then on the next two cycles the battery was empty after one day. As I did not understand, I did a force test with this board where the battery then was empty after two days. I searched the web and found out that this board seems to have some problems with floating potentials when operated in deep sleep. You'll find more information in the link that I attached in the video description. To be honest, I did not dig further. For me just one thing is clear. I will not use this board any further for battery operated projects. Back to our graphs. Next we have a look at the blue graph which belongs to the DFR ESP8266. At least for the second and the third comparison, power consumption is quite similar to the yellow graph which belongs to the DFR ESP32. Both setups last for 4 days, respectively 5 days if we completely drain the battery, which happened to me unintentionally. Based on this result, there is a clear winner for me, the ESP Fire Beetle 32 port from DF Robot. The ESP8266 port has an almost identical energy consumption. But the setup is more complex because it only offers one AD converter. Fine. Now let's look at the measured soil moisture values. This is a little difficult because some of our sensors have only been running for one day. That means the comparison isn't entirely fair here. Nevertheless, one thing is immediately apparent from the values. The DF Robot Soil Moisture Sensor version 2 has the greatest sensitivity. Let's zoom in a little here. At this time, shortly before noon, I started the test. Half an hour later, I watered the plant. The soil in the plant was very dry, so we expect a big jump in the readings, which is the case. But the height of the step varies depending on the sensor type. The bigger the jump, the better the sensitivity and therefore the better the sensor. The common soil moisture sensor version 2 performs worst. The change is from 1.37V to 0.92V, so 45mV. The DFR Soil Moisture Sensor version 1 performs a little better. Here the step is from 2.2V down to 1.2V, so step size is approximately 1V. Simply put, the sensitivity is twice as high compared to the sensor before. And then we have our DFR Soil Moisture Sensor version 2. Once the step size is from 1.83V to 043V and once from 8.67V down to 30mV. So step size is approximately 1.4V up to 1.6V. The sensitivity is 3 times higher than the worst sensor. I realize that such a one-shot comparison has no statistical significance. But for me, the result is enough to make a decision. I continue with the DFR Soil Moisture Sensor version 2. Because the sensor is also large in size and the electronics are already cast, 
I like the sensor best from the start. Since this also delivers the best sensitivity, I have a clear winner here. I would like to mention one more thing. I'm sure you have noticed that too. The blue and the yellow graphs should actually be identical since they are belong to the same sensor type. But there seems to be an offset and also a slightly different slope here. Let's see what the spread is like here when we put more of these sensors into operation. For now it seems as if we will have to calibrate each sensor individually later. It is completely clear to me that the effort put in here is overkill. It was more or less obvious that the DFR Soil Moisture Sensor version 2 will deliver the best performance. The sensor also costs x times more compared to the other two. Nevertheless, I find the results interesting as I like to analyze data. Especially when it comes to optimizing consumption in your smart home, such long-term measurements are very practical and I wanted to share this idea and implementation with you. Perfect, so we have chosen an ESP board and the actual sensor. But there is a big problem. Our 1100 mAh battery just lasts for 4 days. Not very satisfying. The question now clearly arises as to why this is the case and above all, how do we get it under control? Those exact questions will be covered in the next video. And no, we will not use a battery with more capacity. So that's it for today's update. Thank you all for your great feedback and support. I will do my best to release the next episode next month. Thanks for watching, see you next time and happy making.